In the realm of UFO enthusiasts and those intrigued by the extraterrestrial, few names stand out as much as Bob Lazar. This unassuming figure burst onto the public scene in the late 1980s, presenting a narrative that would challenge the general consensus on UFOs and spark countless debates. Uh, flying saucers, flying discs. Bob Lazar wasn't always synonymous with UFO lore. In fact, by profession, he was a physicist. According to his own account, he was hired to work in a secret section of Area 51, the United States' most infamous and secretive military base. The facility, named S-4, supposedly housed projects that were not just top secret, but also otherworldly. The essence of Lazar's story revolves around his claims that he was recruited to work on a project involving the reverse engineering of alien technology. He described a scenario where human scientists, like himself, were attempting to understand and replicate the advanced technological marvels that were purportedly recovered from extraterrestrial visitors. This wasn't just about stealth aircraft or advanced weaponry, this was technology from the stars. Bob Lazar's revelation was more than just a personal account. It was a challenge to the US government's stance on UFOs. It was a direct claim that they not only knew about these visitors, but had tangible physical proof of their existence. To some, Lazar became a hero, a whistleblower lifting the veil on one of the biggest cover-ups in human history. To others, he was seen as a hoaxer, weaving an intricate tale for attention or perhaps other motivations. Over the years, his credibility has been both supported and attacked, with factors such as his alleged educational background and employment history becoming points of contention. However, whether one believes in the veracity of his story or not, Bob Lazar's impact on the world of UFO research and popular culture is undeniable. He opened a Pandora's box of questions, many of which remain unanswered to this day. One of the most compelling parts of Bob Lazar's story revolves around his description of a fleet of nine flying saucers. These weren't just models or simulations. Lazar claimed that these were actual extraterrestrial craft stored at the S-4 facility near Area 51. Each of these saucers, according to Lazar, had its own unique design and size, suggesting either different alien civilizations or various models from one advanced extraterrestrial race. The craft were not just for observation either. Lazar stated that he was given limited access to one particular craft, which he codenamed Sport Model. This saucer was sleek and smooth, shaped like a classic UFO, and had an interior that appeared both organic and biomechanical. Inside the Sport Model, Lazar described the absence of any traditional human-designed controls like buttons, switches or levers. Instead, the craft was operated by a series of molded seats and panels that seemed to respond directly to touch and intention. Everything about its build suggested that it wasn't constructed for human physiology. The absence of right angles, the seamless nature of its construction, and the smooth metallic surfaces all hinted at an engineering knowledge far surpassing our current understanding. More intriguingly, Lazar claimed that these craft utilized a propulsion system that was not just advanced, but entirely alien to our current scientific understanding. He talked of a power source referred to as Element 115, which was used to generate gravity waves, allowing the sources to essentially fall in the direction they wanted to travel. This method of propulsion, if true, would revolutionize our understanding of physics and space travel. But where did these craft come from? Lazar didn't claim to know their exact origins, but he did suggest they were part of a long-standing back-engineering project by the US government, the aim to decipher the technology for potential military and scientific applications. Throughout his many interviews, the consistent nature of Bob's descriptions about these nine mysterious crafts has been a cornerstone for many of his believers. It either lends credibility to his tale or showcases a deeply intricate and unwavering commitment to his narrative. Regardless of where one stands on the spectrum of belief, the story of the Nine Sources is undoubtedly one of the most fascinating pieces of UFO lore in the modern era. Bob Lazar's tales from his alleged time at the S-4 facility delve into more than just descriptions of physical craft. They provide a glimpse into technology that, by his account, defies our current scientific understanding. One of the core tenets of Lazar's revelations is that the propulsion systems of these extraterrestrial craft operated on principles that we have yet to fully grasp in terrestrial science. He frequently spoke of Element 115, 
which at the time of his initial disclosures had not been synthesized or identified in the periodic table. This element, according to Lazar, served as the fuel for the spacecraft. It's not merely about using it as a source of energy, but it's the manner in which it supposedly manipulated gravity that stands out. The crafts didn't just fly in our conventional sense, they generated their own gravitational fields, allowing them to warp and bend spacetime. This mode of travel would mean that rather than moving through space, space itself would move around the craft. But how can one even begin to control gravity, a force we are only beginning to understand? Lazar described devices within the craft known as gravity amplifiers. These, combined with the use of element 115, were said to produce a gravitational wave focused by three distinct cylindrical structures underneath the craft. The implication here is significant. Mastering gravity would open up possibilities not only for space travel, but also for how we understand the very fabric of the universe. Furthermore, the craft's interiors, as per Lazar's account, were just as enigmatic. Without conventional controls or recognizable interfaces, it's postulated that the craft might have had a direct connection with its pilot, suggesting a biomechanical or even telepathic mode of operation. The cockpit of the sport model craft he detailed was devoid of sharp angles, and everything seemed to be molded from a singular seamless material. This design approach raises questions about the manufacturing techniques of these supposed extraterrestrial civilizations. How can a civilization craft object without seams, joints, or evident assembly lines? The truly intriguing aspect of Lazar's claim was that, at the time he made it, element 115 did not exist on the periodic table. It was a supposed material with properties that sounded straight out of a science fiction novel. Skeptics quickly seized upon this, using it as fodder to debunk Lazar's tales. However, in a twist of scientific advancement, the element was synthesized in labs in 2003 and added to the periodic table, known as Muscovium. However, it's crucial to point out a significant difference between Lazar's claims and the scientifically synthesized version of the element. The element 115 produced in laboratories is highly unstable, decaying rapidly, and not showing any of the marvelous gravitational properties described by Lazar. Lazar anticipated this discrepancy, asserting that the stable form of element 115, the one with the unique properties he described, was likely found in regions of the universe with different star production mechanisms than our own. Bob Lazar's discussions on element 115 serve as a linchpin to his broader narrative. While the scientific community's version doesn't directly validate his claims, its very existence provides a tantalizing hint that there's still much about the universe we don't understand. Whether you view Lazar as a whistleblower or a fabricator, discussions surrounding element 115 demonstrate the fascinating interplay between fringe claims and mainstream science. As the years have passed, debates have raged over the validity of Lazar's claims. Yet, his consistent and detailed accounts of technology beyond our understanding continue to fuel discussions in both scientific and UFO enthusiast circles. Whether one views him as a whistleblower or a storyteller, the tales he has spun serve as a captivating exploration of what might be possible beyond the limits of our current knowledge. In the dynamic world of UFO stories, testimonies and whistleblowers, it's not uncommon for accounts to evolve, get embellished, or even get retracted as the years roll by. Yet there stands Bob Lazar, a singular figure whose story has remained consistent since it first broke into the public consciousness in the late 1980s. What adds weight to Lazar's claims isn't just the detail in his revelations, but the unyielding consistency with which he's presented them, irrespective of the audience or the format, be it radio interviews, documentaries, or casual conversations. From the moment Lazar came forward with his astonishing claims about extraterrestrial technology at Area 51's S foresight, skepticism surrounded his narrative. Critics and debunkers came out in droves, armed with a myriad of reasons to dismiss Lazar's claims. They cited a lack of concrete evidence, questioned his educational and professional background, and often painted him as a fabricator seeking fame or financial gain. However, in the face of such overwhelming scrutiny, where many would falter or revise their statements, Lazar's central narrative about the alien crafts, their propulsion systems, and the secret workings of S4 have stayed the same. 
Time, as they say, is the best judge. Over the three decades since Lazar's claims were made, certain aspects of his story have received unintentional validation. The existence of Element 115, once a crucial but fantastical part of his tale, became a reality when scientists officially added it to the periodic table in 2003. While our synthesized version of the element differs from Lazar's descriptions and its stability is fleeting, its very discovery gives pause to even the most ardent skeptics. Lastly, it's worth noting the personal cost to Lazar. Coming forward with such a narrative, true or not, puts one in the crosshairs of public opinion and often personal and professional alienation. Lazar has expressed on numerous occasions his regret about coming forward and the impact it had on his personal life. If his objective was fame or financial gain, one would expect him to double down, to produce more claims, to keep himself in the spotlight. Yet Lazar did the opposite. He receded from the limelight, rarely giving interviews and maintained his initial tale. This behavior contrasts sharply with those who spin stories for personal gain. It begs the question, why would someone maintain a hoax for over three decades, especially when the personal toll is so high? Throughout history, the trajectory of human technological advancement has been somewhat linear. Societies grow, cultures build upon the knowledge of their predecessors, and over time new inventions and methodologies are birthed. This steady march of progress has been charted by historians, sociologists and scientists alike. But every once in a while there's a hiccup in the timeline, a sudden, almost inexplicable burst of progress. Consider the rapid development of the integrated circuit or microchip. In the span of a few decades, we went from room-sized computers with the computing power of a modern calculator to pocket-sized devices that could access vast swathes of human knowledge. These leaps are fascinating, not only because of the technological marvels they produce, but because they often don't align with the expected progression. Now, to add a sprinkle of cosmic wonder to the mix, let's indulge in the speculative. What if some of these rapid advancements didn't have their origins in human thought? What if hidden among our countless innovations, some were inspired, tweaked, or even directly acquired from extraterrestrial sources? It's an alluring thought, especially when we consider the pace at which some of these technologies have emerged and the transformative impact they've had on society. One might argue that human collaboration, the globalization of information and cumulative innovation could explain these jumps and they'd be right for the most part. But isn't there a sliver of wonder, a tiny what-if that might suggest otherwise? After all, in the vast expanse of the universe with its billion of stars and potentially even more planets, could it be possible that we've had a little nudge along the way? Even if this speculation remains firmly in the realm of fiction, the very act of questioning, of wondering, propels us forward. It challenges us to look beyond the familiar horizon and entertain the infinite possibilities that lie beyond. And whether those possibilities are of our making or inspired by something or someone beyond the stars remains one of the greatest mysteries of our time. Human history is punctuated with moments of technological marvels that seem, at first glance, to come out of nowhere. These sudden advances, which defy linear progression, often raise eyebrows and fuel theories about extraterrestrial influences. One particularly enticing area of investigation is the realm of advanced propulsion systems and the anomalous technologies that accompany them. Let's start with the basics, propulsion. Our understanding of propulsion has, for the longest time, been based on Newton's third law. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. This is the principle that governs everything from the combustion engines in our cars to the colossal rocket engines that send astronauts into space. But in the last few decades, there have been whispers and leaked reports of propulsion systems that don't adhere to this conventional wisdom. The idea of reactionless drives or propulsion systems that function without emitting any tangible exhaust has been a subject of both ridicule and intrigue in the scientific community. Now, on to the anomalies. Over the years, there have been multiple reports, some more credible than others, about materials and technologies that seem to defy the laws of physics. Memory metals, substances that revert to a predefined shape, irrespective of how they've been manipulated, are one such example. These materials, light, flexible and incredibly resilient, don't align neatly with our current understanding of metallurgy or material science. Then there's the topic of energy sources, 
Contemporary human technology is primarily powered by electricity, derived from various sources like fossil fuels, nuclear power and renewables. However, there have been persistent rumors about devices often linked to unidentified aerial phenomena, powered by energy sources unknown to modern science. These energy sources seemingly compact, incredibly efficient and with emissions profiles that are negligible, are a dream for current technological applications. If there's any truth to these speculations, the implications of such an energy source would be revolutionary. Piecing it all together, one could argue that these tech anomalies and whispers of advanced propulsion systems point to a potential outside influence, perhaps extraterrestrial in nature. But without concrete evidence, these remain in the realm of speculation and conjecture. The search for answers continues, but in the meantime, these mysteries offer a tantalizing glimpse into what might be possible, urging us to push the boundaries of our understanding and reach for the stars, both metaphorically and literally. Metamaterials have captured the imagination of researchers and enthusiasts alike, representing a class of materials that exhibit properties not found in naturally occurring substances. What makes metamaterials so fascinating is their unique, almost otherworldly ability to manipulate electromagnetic waves in ways that traditional materials can't. From invisibility cloaks to super lenses that surpass the limitations of conventional optics, the potential applications of these materials seem to border on science fiction. Delving deeper into their structure, metamaterials aren't derived from exotic elements sourced from distant galaxies. Instead, they owe their unique properties to their intricately engineered microstructures. These microstructures, often smaller than the wavelength of light they interact with, give metamaterials their power. By controlling and designing these structures at a microscopic scale, scientists can manipulate how these materials interact with light, radio waves, and other forms of electromagnetic radiation. The talk of advanced alloys, on the other hand, brings us to a slightly different territory. Alloys, as we understand them, are combinations of metals designed to imbue certain desirable properties. From the bronze of our ancient ancestors to the high-strength steels and super-alloys of today, humanity's progress has been marked by our ability to create and harness the properties of alloys. But what if there exist alloys beyond our current comprehension, materials with attributes so unique that they challenge our current scientific understanding? There have been murmurs, especially in the circles focused on unidentified aerial phenomena, about the discovery of unknown alloys. These materials, often associated with unexplained crash sites or encounters, purportedly exhibit properties that cannot be accounted for based on our existing metallurgical knowledge. Whether it's resistance to extreme temperatures, inexplicable lightness combined with strength, or other unique electromagnetic interactions, these alloys represent another piece in the puzzle of potential extraterrestrial technology. While the origins and full capabilities of metamaterials and advanced alloys remain a topic of investigation, their very existence pushes us to question the limits of our technological understanding. It nudges us toward a future where the line between the natural and the engineered, the understood and the mysterious, becomes increasingly blurred propelling us forward in our quest for knowledge and innovation. In the annals of modern ufology, few events have captured the public's imagination and stoked as much debate as the Roswell incident of 1947. A seemingly unassuming town in New Mexico became the epicenter of an event that would fuel discussions, investigations and speculations for decades to come. But what really happened at Roswell? And more importantly, did it have a lasting impact on our technological development? The official narrative is well known. A rancher stumbled upon debris on his property which the US military initially described as a flying disc, before retracting that statement, declaring it the remnants of a weather balloon. Case closed, right? However, the inconsistencies and rapid backtracking in the official narrative only further fueled speculations. Soon, stories began circulating about not just debris, but an actual crashed spacecraft and even extraterrestrial bodies being recovered from the site. But let's dive a bit deeper into the implications of the Roswell incident in the context of technology. There's a theory, albeit largely in the domain of speculative fiction, that suggests some of the materials or technology retrieved from the Roswell site made their way into research labs. These labs, covert and dedicated to reverse engineering, aim to understand, replicate 
and perhaps even implement alien technologies into human-made devices. Consider the growth and emergence of stealth technology, advanced propulsion systems, and even the aforementioned integrated circuits. Could it be mere coincidence that these technologies began to gain significant traction after the 1940s? While there's no concrete evidence linking the Roswell incident to these technological advancements, the timing is, at the very least, intriguing. Furthermore, witness testimonies, although often discredited or brushed aside, have hinted at the potential for technologies beyond our understanding present at Roswell. Whispers of materials that could change shape and composition, or propulsion systems that defied our understanding of physics continue to circulate. The James Webb Space Telescope is often heralded as the successor to the Hubble Space Telescope, but in reality, its capabilities go far beyond its predecessors. Set to redefine our understanding of the universe, the JWST's conception and the technology that drives it are nothing short of groundbreaking. Designed with the primary mirror spanning 6.5 meters, more than two and a half times the diameter of Hubble's, the JWST promises unprecedented resolution and sensitivity. However, it's not just the size of the mirror that sets this telescope apart, it's the engineering behind it. Composed of 18 hexagonal segments coated with a thin layer of gold to optimize infrared reflection, these mirrors can be adjusted individually, allowing for in-flight calibrations. This design ensures optimal imaging performance, even after the wear and tear of a launch and deep space operations. The telescope's position is another intriguing aspect. Instead of orbiting Earth like Hubble, the James Webb Space Telescope is set to occupy a location known as the second Lagrange Point, or L2, nearly 1.5 million kilometers away from our planet. At this spot, the gravitational forces between the Earth and the Sun, as well as the orbital motion of the telescope, all balance out, allowing the telescope to effectively hover in a stable position relative to the Earth and Sun. This unique position affords it an unobstructed view of the universe, free from the interference of Earth's atmosphere or thermal emissions. One of the driving goals behind the telescope is its quest to capture light from the first galaxies that formed after the Big Bang. By focusing on infrared observations, it can look further back in time than ever before, studying the formation and growth of these ancient galaxies and providing insights into the early phases of the universe. But its infrared prowess doesn't stop there. It's also ideally suited to study the formation of stars and planetary systems, including those in our own Milky Way galaxy. The technologies behind the James Webb Space Telescope raise questions about their origins. Given the massive leap in technological capabilities and the precision engineering required for its instruments, one might wonder, could any of its technological inspirations have roots in knowledge beyond our planet? While there's no direct evidence to suggest extraterrestrial influence, the mere existence of such advanced instruments sparks curiosity and opens the door to endless possibilities about our universe and the technologies we devise to study it. And as always, thanks for watching.